Welcome back everybody, uh, day 2 of 30 in 30 challenge continues, uh, um, today's episode is going to be quite interesting, I got this thing a long time ago, I shot a video on it, but I never got a chance to edit it, there were so many different elements to, um, to the work that uh, finding time to locate them on all sorts of different devices was just too difficult, but I couldn't let this one go, it had to be done, I hope you enjoyed guys, let's jump into it. As I mentioned numerous times, do not keep your data on anything that looks like this, that has a silicone feel or plastic feel housing with a metal swing protector for the connector. Those things are ticking time bombs, so you're gonna lose your data on it if you keep it on it <laughs> without a backup. So let's get into it, find out what's going on and find out if we can fix it or not. Right off the top, um, I mean, we can try to wiggle the connector to see if that's something that may need to be addressed. Um, it's not a unusual situation where these devices come in with problems connector that are related to the connector, but uh, this one feels like it's still okay. Wow. Things are getting really interesting. So the more I work on these devices, the more blown away I get uh, at what comes in, what state it comes in, but most importantly, uh, <laughs> the devices that are being repurposed for these uh, promotional flash drives. So over here we see some sort of a SanDisk uh, card. I, I'm, I'm actually drawing a blank on what this is used for. Uh, it's got some sort of interface here, but what kind of card this is, I'm, I'm not really sure. Uh, definitely a SanDisk signature circuitry, wavy, not not straight, not no types of lines, just simply uh, equal length wavy um, traces. Uh, but from what I can tell here is that the chip was mounted on the board like this, and then somebody thought it would be a good idea to take the chip off by prying it off without heat and as a result we have a board that has every single pad that held this chip ripped from the board. Now what can be done in this kind of state? Um, well two things we could uh, rebuild these pads this is actually a pretty cool project I, th I think this is gonna be very very uh, interesting and uh, fun to learn um, we could get this, um, these pads regrown and uh, cure them with a mask so that everything stays in place and then simply re, uh, reflow it to the board because the board I'm pretty sure is, is fine. It's based on uh, what it looks like Alcor controller. Here's what's happening. At this point we have a device that um, had been uh, to some repair shop because this this connector it's it didn't leave the factory like this the problem here is that we don't know what state this drive arrived to that previous shop at right so if it was already not functional maybe the problem is inside of the memory and fixing it right now isn't really important uh, because if we fix it and the problem is still inside of the NAND, we still end up having the same problem that original owner of this device dealt with when it stopped working. We would plug it into the device to read it and it would not respond. Um, but maybe they missed something. Maybe there's something on the board like this broken connector for example that wasn't doing its job properly anyways I think the best thing would be to start testing it out one thing at a time and I got my power supply unit here and I got my uh, reader meter for uh, flash drives here so let's plug this in and power it on so when we power it on we'll see what the controller is consuming and it is consuming so the controller turns on so Based on the numbers that I see, 
I think the controller was good. I think the controller was communicating. So, uh, unless the connector was broken all along and they uh, turned this chip off first and then decided to fix the connector, I really don't see any, any links to this problem. So let's uh, take the connector off and see what's underneath it. So this cavity here is halfway filled. Um, so I'm just gonna add a, a little bit of fresh solder in there and then pull it with wick. That should open it up a little bit. Let's see if the connector fits now. Yeah, the connector is now laying flat. Just gonna tap it in place. Yeah, that looks much better now. We're either gonna need to obtain a pinout for this type of memory device. I gotta check all the databases. I don't honestly even know what this type of device is and what it comes on. So let's just Google this part number that's on there. Nothing. Well, we have other options. In order to find the pinout for this device, uh, we can use our common sense. It's a little bit of a research uh, process, but we will get there. The point is we need to find what those pads mean and where do they go. Let's clean off these poor pads. this up so the question you may ask is uh, well since you don't know what type of device this is how are you even going to find out what the pinout for it is well the answer is simple I don't know the pinout for this specific device that's m that was mounted in the center but I do know the pinout for the uh, pads that are designed for TSOP 48 that's uh, that's open source information anybody can find it online uh, by googling the even simplest things like TSOP 48 pinout um, TSOP 48 pinout has signals uh, that are connected to the controller that's on the other side right so our controller right there uses exactly the same commands sig command signals and bus signals for TSOP 48 layout of the schematic and this weirdo shaped card schematic. Yeah, this is a this is a memory stick pro dual. I'm looking at the database and I actually have a pinout for it already. 
But since I already promised you guys to show you how to determine these pinouts on these cheap uh, cars like that, let's let's just go ahead and do it. So there it is. I found it. Uh, this is the uh, GSOP48. This is the address where you guys can actually look for it, or just type in onfi.org GSOP48 pinout, <clears throat> and this will come up. This pinout here is something that we can use with help of multimeter. We can trace where signals are. Yeah, we're gonna work like this. So let's locate the ground. The ground is on pad 13 on left hand side. This is this one, big, bulky. So this is the ground. Now, where is the ground for us here? It's probably in this spot, in this spot. This is power. So on the image that I sent to myself, we can start marking it up. All right, those we figured out. Going back to the schematic, they're marked. And going back to the drawing board, we are looking for the next pad we're gonna connect. Starting 44 and down, which is the count starts from 48, 48, 47, 46, 45, 44. One, two, three, four. These are our bus signals. Seven, six, five, and four. So what we need to do is just find out where they go. So starting off with the one, two, three, four, five, 44. Uh, IO so IO7 is this pad we're gonna go ahead and mark this okay that's good D6 is right underneath it so this was the D7 D6 is right underneath it and it's this one let's go D6 D6 I'm gonna just reposition that's d6 this is the d5 the d5 is a bit more difficult because it doesn't go to a direct trace it goes into a via and then pops out somewhere else so this is the one that we're actually going to need to hunt through this is the one we're actually going to need to hunt through this test mode so we can go uh, this one we know this one we know this one we don't know but we're gonna just check where it could be. It has to be one of these. There, you see it's beeping? This is our D5. Then we're looking for the D4. One, two, three, four. This one also goes somewhere. This is the D4. Go back to the drawing. What is the next set? The next set is one, two, three, four, five from the bottom. It's buzzing. It's IO0. Next signal. That's right. RB. This is it, guys. This is the breakout for the pinout. We can save this or use this if you guys want to use it. If you ever come across this, feel free to do so. I'm going to keep it up here.
Now at this point we got everything connected, uh, just making sure that everything is linked to the cards, contact pads, and uh, then we can plug it in and test it, finally. So the red one on the ground. So it's C1 is not connected. Everything else is connected. Then we're going to need PC3000 flash. Link these two together. Like that. AU6989. Going to type it up. AU6989. Alright, so I think uh, if we get one bank showing up and if it's four gigs in size then we're probably good to go um, let's read it out yeah so we get one bank showing so our pinout is good Ta-da! and if we go into say read chip direct read mode and explore the device in page designer a lot of bit errors you see these dots in there that's not good hopefully there is a there's a way to uh, do a proper readout on it so if I'm looking at the device correctly uh, it says it's 4G um, let's go into let's let's cre clear this first and go into parameters um, chip parameters basics got four gigs so yeah that's what we s were supposed to get I don't know why there was a second uh, bank available uh, doesn't look like there's anything on it uh, at least it wasn't linking up with the ground so I don't think there should be anything in it uh, let's go ahead and read it with the uh, optimal mode that's selected it's a four gig unit says 20 minutes is gonna read it at 3 megabytes per second so in 20 minutes I'll have a dump of it so we can begin analysis image had been uh, extracted we're gonna add it to the um, transformation graph let's have a look at the results So here we were able to find the error correction codes and time to run them. Alright, so first run is done. Let's have a look at what we end up with. Um, my suspicion is going to be that it's not looking good. <laughs> we got a lot of uncorrected data here. Um, so if we build a map of all corrected sectors, let's say if there is anything that's good in here, we only have like 170 kilobytes out of the entire thing and uh, we do have um, almost two gigs of uncorrected it's not a lot and honestly I'm pretty sure we're gonna figure out the readout process for this uh, the only thing is, is that we're gonna need to try a bunch of options so I'm gonna set it at 99 just in case if it's running somewhat okay and let's see what it's gonna do with the read retry um, at the regular power. So let's increase the power on it a little bit and see how it's gonna like the 3.6 and work it down from there.
man it's not really budging so I have nothing else uh, left to try but to uh, mount it up like this for now it's extension through the wires uh, the extensions are a little longer than what I want them to be but this is as, as short of wires I can get it to be at this point so now that everything is connected I'm gonna go into a USB control panel for uh, DeepSpar and I'm gonna start it up see the readings the readings we're getting are pretty good let's have a look at the log and the log is also really good <laughs> So um, at this point, I would launch our studio. And there's our device, four gigs with the partition FAT16 showing up. And what do you know, we can access all of it. So at this point, I would clone it, create an image byte by byte and to the disk I, 7093, save. If I set the sector map side by side, we can see that the imaging is running at about 10 megabytes per second, which is pretty good considering the quality of this device. Looks to me that maybe uh, the impact did rip out that chip and maybe that chip just needed to be reconnected. And um, if that's the case I'm not surprised it's working again to be honest with you but it's kind of cool that it's working under these conditions <laughs> at this point we got wires from the NAND broken out to a NAND protocol the NAND protocol uh, leading back to the PCB the device is fixed temporarily at least we'll create an image off of it once the image is created we can put this thing to rest so if you've got a problem with the flash drive guys that needs fixing i would recommend not to poke around in it unless you know what you're doing i'm glad it worked out if you have any questions you guys can drop them in the comment section below if you're new to the channel i highly recommend you subscribe because this channel is all about data recovery and if you're into that you're definitely in the right place and uh yeah i'll see you all in the next episode but this one is considered to be successfully recovered at this point.